All right then gang, in this series we're going to be talking about Codex by OpenAI and all the different ways we can use it within a development workflow. But first of all, what exactly is Codex? And that's a question I've asked myself a bunch of times over the last few months because it's actually a few different tools rolled up into a single product. But right now I feel like there's a concerted effort by OpenAI to smooth out any confusion and unify all these tools under that single Codex name. So. At its core, Codex is an AI-powered coding assistant created by OpenAI, which can work autonomously on coding tasks that we assign to it. It uses the GPT-5 Codex model, which is their model tailored specifically towards agentic coding with Codex, and it's available to anyone who's got a ChatGPT Plus or Pro account with no extra charge. And where it differs from other AI coding assistants like Claude Code and Copilot is that it offers multiple ways we can work with it. There's a Codex IDE extension, which can be added to VS Code or Cursor or Windsurf. And that's very much in the same vein as something like Copilot for VS Code, where we have a chat panel for interacting with AI models. And we can also let it take on coding tasks more autonomously when we need it to. There's also the Codex CLI, which is much more in the mold of Claude Code, where we interact with the models and delegate tasks directly from the terminal. Then there's the Codex Cloud Service, which is a browser-based tool that we can connect to a GitHub repository and then use to assign tasks for Codex to work on. When we do that, Codex spins up a remote container to run the code remotely and make changes. Then it opens a pull request on your GitHub repo. And the idea behind this is that you can spin up Codex tasks from anywhere, your laptop, your mobile, or even some random computer without access to your code, because you don't need your project cloned locally. Codex Cloud connects to your repo remotely and handles things on its own server. And finally, there's also the Codex review tool, which we can install on GitHub to automatically review pull requests when they're made. So that's four distinct ways we can work with Codex. And what's impressive is the way they can interlink and provide context to each other. For example, I can use the Codex IDE extension to delegate a new task on the Codex cloud service. When it finishes that task, I can either bring those changes back down locally or tell Codex cloud to open a PR directly on GitHub. And then if Codex cloud opens that PR, the Codex review bot can immediately kick in and double check its own work before we merge it. So instead of them feeling like separate products, they feel more like different windows into the same product. And that means you can switch between them depending on the situation without feeling too much like you're juggling completely different tools. So in this course, then we're going to explore each of those different interfaces separately and look at how they can work together a little bit as well. We'll start off with Codex Cloud, which will connect to a GitHub repo and then use to spin up cloud tasks. We can then open PRs from those tasks and ask Codex to review them directly on GitHub. Then we're going to jump into the Codex CLI and work on a project locally before pushing those changes manually up to the repo. And after that, we'll install the Codex IDE extension in VS Code, talk about context, reasoning, and how to add an MCP server. And finally, we'll see how the extension and Codex Cloud can work together by delegating multiple tasks from our local setup to the cloud where they can work in parallel with each other. But before we go any further, I want to mention two things. First, this is not a Vibe coding course for non-coders. It's a course aimed at coders, either new or experienced, who want to implement Codex into their current workflow. And so second, with that in mind, I would expect you to have a basic knowledge of web development and ideally GitHub. And I think Git and GitHub especially are really important to understand when you're letting AI code on your project. Because without it, AI-powered coding agents can wreck your code base in a matter of minutes. So for those interested, I've really recently released a whole Git and GitHub masterclass course on my website, which also contains a chapter about AI driven workflows. So I'll leave the link to that course down below this video. It's only $10 and it's going to make you really comfortable using Git and GitHub. Anyway, with that little disclaimer out of the way, let's crack on and set up our Codex account. So, like I said before, Codex is available to anyone with a ChatGPT Pro or Plus account, so you'll need to sign up for one of those plans first, which you can do at chatgpt.com forward slash pricing. Once you have a plan, you can use the Codex cloud service in the browser by coming to chatgpt forward slash codex. If you normally use regular ChatGPT in the browser, you should also see a link to Codex Cloud in the sidebar. And if you click on that, it's just going to bring you to the same page. So then, this is Codex Cloud, the web-based service we can use to run tasks on our projects remotely. Now, in order to do this, we first of all need to give Codex access to a GitHub repo by connecting our GitHub account. So we can do that by clicking on this connect to GitHub button right here. 
or if you don't see that button, you can also go to the settings up here and then to the data controls option. And from this page, you can connect your GitHub account as well. So if we click on that button, we're gonna see a pop-up with some more information about this connection. And we can just then click on this button down here and authenticate with our GitHub credentials. Okay, so once that's done, we can head back to the Codex dashboard and we should see a new option to select an environment to work in. In other words, we need to select a GitHub repo we want Codex to work on and configure how it works on that project remotely. So we've not created an environment yet, but we can do that by clicking this button and then choosing to create one. When we do that, we're gonna see a pop-up where we can make a new environment. And the first thing we need to do is choose a GitHub repo to work on. So you can scroll through all of your repos here to select one, and you can also search for one at the top as well. Now, I'm gonna search for a dummy project that I'm making called YumPair, which is just a little food pairing application that I'm working on just for a little bit of fun. So I'm gonna select that repo for this environment. Next up, we can choose to keep the automatic codex code reviews on for any new pull requests on the repo, or we can toggle it off. Now, I'm gonna keep it off for now because I wanna focus on other things to begin with, but later we're gonna come back and turn it on again. And then finally down here, we can give the agent internet access if we want, so that when it's working on the project remotely, it can also use the internet. Now you might wanna select this option if the agent needs to interact with remote APIs and services or access documentation or other remote references. We're gonna keep it off for this project though. Anyway, now if we hit create, it's gonna make that new environment and it's gonna put us in it automatically on the dashboard. You can see that right here, where we have this environment selected. Now you can also manage your environments by coming to the settings and then selecting the environments option. And on this page, we should see the one we just created. But if you wanna create another one for a different project, you can just hit the create button up here to do that. Also, we can edit or delete environments by clicking on them. So let me click on this one we just created. And when we do that, I can see a delete button up here and also the edit button. So let me just click on that edit button to see what options we have. And when we do that, we should see a screen that looks something like this with some basic options at the top and some code execution options down here. So like I said before, when we use Codex Cloud to run tasks, it does that remotely on Codex servers, right? By spinning up an isolated container to run that code in. Now, that default container comes with a bunch of pre-installed packages like Node, Python, Ruby, etc. And we can click on this button to change the versions of those packages. We can also add custom environment variables to the environment, which you might need to add if you want the coding agent to access any external APIs or services. And you can also define your own setup scripts for the container when it runs by toggling this option right here. The default one automatically runs the install commands like npm install, but if you need to run any specific setup scripts for the environment, you can do that right here. Again, we can toggle the internet access option on and off here as well. Okay then, so now we have a new environment set up on Codex Cloud. Let's start giving it some tasks in the next lesson. By the way, if you want early access to the entire course now, you can grab it on the netninja.dev website. It's just $3 to buy, or you can sign up for a NetNinja Pro subscription, which is $9 a month. And the first month is half price with this promo code right here. So I will leave this link down below in case you wanna go ahead and buy it. Either way, I'll see you in the very next lesson.